You know, I used to love my life in Egypt, and I come back to England, and I, I just, why? Why, I would ask myself. And then this is where I began to ask this question. What is the purpose of life? Why are we here? For what reason do we exist? What do all these things mean? What does it mean, love? What is life for? What is it all about? And I figured it. I sat down and I figured it and I said, yep, I am here at school in order to work hard so that I will get good results in my exams. So I can go to a good university, so I can get a good degree, so I can get a good job that will make me enough money so that when I get married and have kids, I can send them back to that same expensive public school, private school and that they can work hard and get a good degree so that they can get a good job so that when they have kids they can earn enough money to send their kids back to that school right and 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 then i thought about it. i thought that's it that's the purpose of life that's what it's all for i said no way i can't believe that's all there is to life and so i began a quest it was not like today i am going on a quest for the truth it wasn't like that it was just I began to think, I began to search, I began to look through other religions. You know, anything that I thought might give me an insight and an understanding to what is the purpose of life, what is it all about. Now, when I was about 19, something happened very, very, something very important happened, and that was in the 10 years that I spent and my holidays in Egypt only one person ever really had a decent conversation with me about Islam now I had many many questions about Catholicism but when it came to anyone challenging me okay or questioning me I would vigorously defend I would become a defender of the faith <laughs> you know even though I didn't actually believe in it but, you know, I suddenly became a defender of it. It was a strange paradox, okay? I had many questions in my mind, but, you know, especially when it's this Egyptian. I mean, after all, what does he know? <laughs> I'm English. We used to rule these chaps not a few years ago. You know, after this conversation has been going on for about 40 minutes, he's, he asks me a few simple questions, and they've stuck in my head until this day. He said, so you believe that Jesus is God? I said, yes. And he said, and you believe Jesus died on the cross? I said, yes. He said, so you believe God died? And when he said that, you know what? It was, if Mike Tyson had come and smacked me in the face with a fist, right? It wouldn't have had, I mean, I was absolutely flabbergasted. Because I suddenly realized the irrationality and the, 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 the just, I have to say it, the foolishness of that, of what I was believing. And I, inside myself, of, I said, of course I don't believe that God died. You can't kill God. And I realized that all these years I had been taught something. I had been indoctrinated with something. I had been taught this thing and I always felt uncomfortable with it, but you know, it just took someone to spell it out for me in clear, simple terms. Look, if you believe this and you believe this, then you must believe that. And I realized that, no, I didn't believe that. But you know what? I wasn't going to admit that to him. I wasn't going to admit. I said, <laughs> That's been very interesting, and I, I've got to go up to my cabin now, okay? <laughs> Bye! <laughs> you know, I didn't want to think about it, and I went up and started smoking and having a coffee and writing and doing anything to think about except what the guy had been telling me. But, you know, it had its effect. It really had its effect. You know, because after that stage, and this is something, like I said, I'd always been uncomfortable with. But that was a big changing point in my life. You could say it was an epiphany. No one, if you were on a spiritual journey, a quest for truth, you wouldn't have thought of, dreamed of looking at Islam. And I didn't. I looked at everything.
So I reached this stage when I basically, I was, I was basically at this stage a hippie. Okay? So I was about now 20 years old, 19, 20 years old, I was a hippie. I had, by this stage, invented my own religion. Okay? This religion was bits and pieces of all the religions that I had studied, and I took them all together and I made my own religion. Okay? And so therefore I started to develop this philosophy of my own religion, but it didn't take me long to figure that this was the worst bunch of rubbish that I'd ever come across. Right? I mean, of all the things I'd been through, it was the worst. And I said to myself, forget it. Forget religion, forget spirituality, forget all this stuff. Maybe there's no meaning to life. Maybe there's just nothing more to life than being rich. Maybe my problem was, is that I didn't have enough money. Now to show you what I'm thinking of in terms of the money I thought I would need to make me happy, I'm thinking here, yachts and private jets. That's the stage that I'm going to need to move up to, right? So you can imagine my lifestyle before that, okay? So I'm thinking to myself, money. Okay, let's go back to money. How do I make lots of money with very little effort? Because who wants to work hard? Who wants to spend all the time working? You want money and then you want to enjoy that money. So. Less work, more money, that's what we need. Maximum enjoyment. So, I thought to myself, let's make a study of this. Let's start thinking about people who have got money in the world. Okay? And let's think about how they got their money. So I started thinking. I started thinking about Britain. Okay, lots of money there. No problem. But too much work. What, the Industrial Revolution? Oh, no way, you know. All those satanic mills and those dark mills and all that industrial, no, forget that. America, you know, the American dream. What is the American dream? You're in the gutter and you struggle, and it's the rat race and you make it and you're the self-made millionaire. I said, that is definitely too much hard work. The Japanese, they've got lots of money, but all they do is work. That's all they ever do. And in those days, they were well known, the Japanese, for being workaholics. And then it came to me, those Saudi Arabians. They've been sitting on their camels, going Allahu Akbar, and they've got all this money. That's the one. That's it. Let me look at that. That's interesting. No effort, maximum money. There's got to be something there. So I said to myself, okay, let me think about it. Of course. Okay, what's their religion, their book? Yeah, the Quran. Right. Let me have a look at this Quran. There's got to be something interesting there. And that, that is really what motivated me to go down to the bookshop and I took a translation of the Qur'an. And you know what, I really believe it had to be like that way because I was really just approaching the Qur'an out of curiosity to see what it had to say. I was coming with an open mind, you know. I was not looking for truths, I was not looking for what, I was just curious to see what did this book have to say. Was there something there? That's all. Otherwise, I don't think I ever would have looked at it, okay? So I took it down and uh, began reading the Qur'an. Now, I'm a pretty fast reader. And I remember very clearly, I was in a train. I was going from where I was living, across the River Thames, okay, to Victoria train station. I remember very distinctly, I was sitting in the train, reading, I was sitting next to the window, reading this translation of the Qur'an. I looked out of the window, I looked back and I said to myself, if I have ever read a book that is from God, this is it. And that really, I could say, was the moment that I realized and I believed that the Qur'an was from God. And uh, it was always my habit. You know, I didn't just read about things, I tried to practice them. You know, you can read and read and read, but you know, like they say, you can look at the orange all day long. It looks nice, it's pretty, it's orange, it smells nice, but you know, how does it taste? You have to taste it, right? 